hey guys, I'm playing two 10 minute training games here, rapid games. I'm gonna talk through my thought process and see if we can approach 2300. We're gonna play knight to f6 and probably go into a Portuguese gambit. And here we go, yeah, this is pretty common. We're gonna go with bishop to g4. And we will lose a tempo if they play f3, but that's kind of the whole point, or one of the points of this opening, is that if they play f3, it creates these weaknesses that we are hoping we can take advantage of in the future. We also take away the f3 square from white's knight, and that's kind of the point. Now, they don't have to do that. They could also just play knight f3 if they want, but yeah, a lot of people will do that. And we just drop back to f5, and sometimes people really like to get aggressive, which they gain a lot of space, they gain a lot of time on our, on our pieces, but they create weaknesses, and remember, pawns can never go backwards. So that's the idea. C4 is pretty common. I believe the move here is E6. And I want to say Knight C6 is the move after the take. And, and you say, yeah, I'm pretty sure it is Knight C6. And the reason we would allow this is because when we take with the king, it actually opens up the E8 square for a rook to go. And we could very quickly play bishop before check, rook e8 check. And actually, our king is not that, in, you know, not that, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? It's it's safe, because we could just go back here to g8 if we need to, right? It's not that much of a risk for us. Now, d5 is a tempting move, but I think knight b4 is just really good for black. I remember looking at this line recently, and there's knight to b4. So, so far, I'm still in my kind of preparation, you could say, my opening preparation. And I don't know what the best move is for white. I think both of these are good for black. Uh, maybe the best thing for white would be to just like defend the pawn is what I'm thinking. Maybe like bishop e3. Not totally sure on that one. d5, knight to b4. And the big problem is these light squares, right? We have some very serious threats. Now there's knight e3, but... Then bishop c5, and, and we're already starting to take advantage of the, the weaknesses created by this move. So I don't think white's going to do that. Maybe they will. Again, I've already talked about this. The rook's going to come over. That looks pretty good for me. Oh, they played bishop b3. Okay. Yeah, and I think maybe that is one of the better moves. I'm leaning now towards just developing with the check and castling right away. I actually don't know any more theory, so I'm out of my preparation now. I could still go knight to b4, but after knight to a3, I'm not entirely sure what my plan would be. Yeah, let me just go bishop b4 check. I want to go ahead and castle now and still try to get a rook to the e-file. I think that's important. So castles and getting a rook here. Of course, if they take, I'll probably just take with the rook. I could still slide the rook over to e7 or even this one to e8, maybe even the queen and see what we can do. Now, d5 now, maybe it's a little bit more annoying for me, but probably would just jump to e5 is what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's going to get pretty wild here. So we'll see how white's going to approach this. That's why I like this opening, because it leads to these, these really crazy positions right from the beginning, usually. Really want to get my rook here. Like almost, almost to the point that I would sack a piece for it. Like d5, rook here, takes, takes. Probably not worth it because after king f2, I guess white just gets away, but at least I'm thinking about it. You know what else I'm wondering too? Like knight to e4. Puts pressure on the knight here, and the idea is if they take, we go queen check, and on g3 we can grab the e4 pawn, hitting the rook, hitting the bishop. Lots of wild moves to consider here. Even on d5, I wonder what happens if I do that. Because if he takes the knight, I would... Okay, bishop d3... Now that's interesting because what if I just take this? If it takes here, we recapture. If the queens get traded, 
what's the situation like? I think I have enough peace activity that I would be happy with that. Okay, and if he takes here and then takes, I do need to have some sort of a follow-up here. So check, check, king moves. Ooh. You know what I could also do is just take the... Oh, it's going to get so tricky, though. Hold on, hold on. So takes, takes... Queen comes in. I'm I'm down a piece at that moment. I could also go check here to try to get my piece back that way. He'd play bishop to e4. Then I would take it. The pawn takes. Then I take here with a check. Ooh. I, I'm seeing enough that I think I'm going to do it. I don't see everything, but it looks like I'm at least getting a nice attack. I might be down a piece, but that's that's part of that's part of the deal. So we're going to go for it and. I don't want to lose use all my time, right? I want to save some time for, for what's going to happen next here. And I don't know which line he's going to go for. So this is a this is not something I would do in like a long time control tournament. I would actually calculate everything. But when you're trying to save some time in a in a blitz game like this, this is what you can do. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go for this line. I was pretty happy with this. Okay. So now I now I'm going to stop and think. Because now I have option number one. We take this. Option number two, we go here, or we do a combination of those things. Like, what if I take first, he takes back, then I go check to fork. Hmm, he could just even ignore it at that moment within the night, which he might do anyway. In which case, I'd want to leave the bishop on the board. So I think I'm going to start with queen check. Let me just check this one first. Check, he blocks with the knight. That doesn't look very good for me. Okay, so I think we're going to go check here. Bishop here, take it. Takes, takes with the check. Queen to e2. Hmm. Yeah, is that actually, you know, I could also go check. Bishop there, takes, takes, and then take here. Take here, forces the king to run. The king's pretty exposed. Ah, that looks pretty good, too. So let me go ahead. And that, now that I'm looking at it, I could also throw in rook to d8 if I want. Ooh, so many moves here. So many moves. I think he's going to go bishop e4. Although he might... Okay, yeah. Bishop e4. Do I want to start by taking that bishop? Does throwing in a rook move help me? I'd have to take with my king, but that seems okay. Where's his queen going to move? I don't know if that actually helps me forcing the queen to move. It might actually help him, even though I do like the fact that the rook's involved. I'm pretty happy with this one, though. Takes, takes, check, check. King, I'm guessing F2, and then I bring the rook in. Down a piece, but we're just all over his king. I like it. Let's do it. I could also leave that on the board, but... Why? I think I want to open things up. Here we go. We're going to go for it. We're going to go for this. We're going to take that. Let me just make sure... Yeah, because queen e2 is a good move here for him. So let's go with this one. He's got to leave the queen defending the rook. He's going to play king f2 or king f1, probably. And I think what I'm going to do... Oh, but then I can actually just take first. Also, I want to play rook to d8. We are down the knight, but I'm pretty sure we have some nice compensation for this. Very interesting position, though. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 3, 6. It's even pawns. So if somehow I was able to clean up all three of these pawns, I'd have three pawns against the knight, which is kind of interesting in and of itself. Okay. I think we get the other rook involved. We can save this move for when is the best moment. But right now, I think we need another piece. Let me just see. Do I have any other obvious moves? Check here. He's just going to block with the knight. I don't think a pawn, just a pawn is enough. I think I need more pieces. So let's go ahead. And what I would like to do now is now maybe I can take. And if he blocks, we jump in here. Or alternatively, we jump in here first. 
trying to bait the knight to block, and then we take and unleash this guy. So lots of ways we could do it. Of course, the white queen has to keep guarding the rook, which is another annoying problem for white. I'm also going to have queen to d4 open up for me. So, man, so many moves here. Let's see where, where white's going to put the queen first. But I'm keeping all these moves in the back of my mind as we do this, right? Taking here, maybe bringing the rook in, maybe... Okay, so we, we have this one. We also could go check here, which you can't block with the queen because you lose the rook. So he'd have to move his king somewhere. Doesn't want to come up, most likely, so I'm guessing maybe e1 or e2. I could grab a pawn. Maybe he blocks. I could grab another pawn. Definitely looks interesting. Could also take here first and on knight f3. Then we go check with the rook. He would probably go back. I could sack. Ooh. That would lead to checkmate. So which way is better? Going here first, then here, then check? If he goes there, we have checkmate. If he goes there, we could sack, but I don't see the follow-up. So here, 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 and he could run up this way, but that's got to be good for me, right? So he's probably going to go to G1, but then we have, yeah, I think that's the best way. I want to give myself some time, so I'm going to go ahead and go for it. So here we go, unleash this rook, he's going to play knight f3, and I'm going to come in rook to d2, I think. This will be super interesting if I don't win this game to see what Stockfish says, because I'm I'm sure that there's like a win here. All right, we're gonna go for it. Oh no no, I, I panicked for a second thinking he could take. He can't take because it's pinned. Okay. Yeah, so check. If he goes here, that's just mate. If he goes here, that's just mate. So he has to go to f1 or g3. So on on here we sack the rook, and that's also mate. Yeah, so he has to go to g3. So rook here, king to g3. And it's not actually clear what I do in that position. I think I'd have to sack. Pawn takes. Check. But then we've got the rook. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. F4. There's got to be. There's got to be something, right? There's got to be. I refuse to believe that there's not something in that position. Oh, you know what? There's another sacrifice. I just take this one. Ah, uh, there it is. There it is. It's, this is going to be a nice finish. I'm, I'm feeling it already. We take on G2. Because if the king takes, we take with the queen. There's checkmate. If the king doesn't take, he has to run. But then we take the knight. Yeah, he's, it's over. It's over. What a fun game. I said I was going to play two games, but I might actually just spend some time analyzing this one instead because this was really interesting. And I kind of want to dig into some of these lines a little bit more. See if I missed anything earlier. But you can see, yeah, he's going to go for that. Uh, so here we go. Let's just verify. We take with the check. If the king takes, the queen comes over, and there's checkmate on f2. If he doesn't take, he would have to go here or here. This one is obviously checkmate right away. This one would also lead to checkmate. After check, we take with the queen. Take with the queen. Yeah, it's, it's over. And so, you know, when you play these openings where you're, you're developing quickly, you're trying to be aggressive, sometimes you have to... Like, just be willing to be down a piece, even if you don't see everything, right? I didn't see this move when I started this combination. It just came later. And so some of it is just trusting that, look, there's going to be a move later. I'll find it later. I'm going to just go into it knowing that, look, I'm going to have two rooks and a queen hunting his king. Even though I'm down a piece, there should be a sacrifice. And this is what it is. All right. Let's check the game accuracy. I think that was pretty good. Oh, two mistakes. Sorry, buddy. I need to uh, check the game review here. That was too interesting. So let me show you guys this. Okay, 87.5. Pretty good. 
Let's see, what did Stockfish have to say about that? So we knew this was all opening theory here. I to see six. I knew that that one was the best move. And here is where I wasn't quite sure. Queen e7 and knight to b4. So queen e7, interesting. Basically saying, look, we need to get a piece on the e-file. The rooks aren't ready yet, so we'll use the queen, even, even at the cost of blocking the bishop. That's what Stockfish wanted. And on d5, what's the point? Now we jump in with knight to b4 and then probably castle queenside, yeah. Okay, so queen e7. Also knight b4, which I did consider. I was just thinking after knight a3, what do I do? Let's see, what is stock? Ah, again, queen e7. So this is what the idea is. And the, the point here is that you just take this, I guess, with the king. King or queen. No, actually, it wants the queen to go over there. Wow. Yeah, I got to study, I gotta study this, this a little bit more because I was a little bit lost here. Anyway, I played bishop b4. Knight c3. Castle. Again, it wants the queen. It, it wants that pressure on the e-file right away. Interesting. Okay. Yep, knight takes c4. Best move. Cool. Yep, best move. Queen e5 check. Awesome. Mm, okay, it's saying... Yeah, it's basically saying they're both good, but it wants me to take here first. I don't think it really matters, so I'm not sure why it's giving the question mark, but... Anyway, same thing. Queen takes c3 check. Yeah, so I basically played all the right moves. He blundered here. What was the move? King to e2. Yeah, very unintuitive move because now he's allowing me to grab these with check if I want or even I probably would have brought the other rook over, honestly. Let's see. What does Stockfish say here? He takes... Ah, because now I have to take with the king. Ooh, rook to c1. See, this is the... These are the kind of... like. Ridiculous moves that Stockfish finds that most humans don't even think about. I mean, yeah, what a weird move. Anyway, let's let's go back to the game. So, King F2 blunder, and it actually did want me to take first, and then slide the rook over. Not sure why. Let's see. Let's see if we can figure out why that wasn't the the best move. Because of E7. Oh, a queen sacrifice so that you can trade off the rooks. Wow. See, I would not have thought this would be good for white, but I guess you do have the three pieces and you're about to block the queen with the knight and my life's going to be kind of difficult. Still an interesting position, right? But I can get my king safe is what Stockfish is saying and now I can go hunting pawns and who knows what's happening in this game. Wow, okay. Didn't even consider that e7. Look at that. Another one of those stockfish moves, right? But he moves the queen, and now it's all over. Yep, we take, we come down, and it's mate. It's mate, and I found it. Cool. And just to, to show you guys, if he goes here, what I was saying, queen here and checkmate. If he goes to f1, we sack here. Takes, and then it's checkmate, depending on where the king moves to. And if he goes here, it's checkmate right away. So really nice game. I think that was a good a good illustration of you know how to attack. And um yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you have questions, comments. I was gonna play another game, but I feel like that's pretty good with the analysis. Um and yeah. See you guys next time. Thanks for watching.